We can add a great deal of realism to RenderWorks using a texture feature called Displacement Mapping, and it's actually very easy to implement. Let's open the exercise file for this chapter, exercise15.vwx. We'll be rendering in OpenGL, but first let's take a look at the OpenGL settings to make sure that we can see textures. We'll go to View, Rendering, OpenGL Options, and make sure the options are set as shown here. The stones in the planter are really an image-based texture that's been attached or mapped to an extrusion in the same way that we discussed in an earlier chapter. OpenGL shows this as a flat image, but if we now render the scene in one of the higher quality RenderWorks modes, for example, Final Quality RenderWorks, we can see that the texture has acquired a three-dimensional aspect. You can see the individual stones protruding and casting shadows, and it's still a flat extrusion with an image mapped onto it, it's just being represented in a more realistic way. This ability for textures to display a three-dimensional aspect is controlled by two different types of settings. We find one in the texture's own settings and the other in the RenderWorks settings. So first we need to edit the texture, but then we also need to render it with the appropriate RenderWorks setting. To make the second one easier, we can select a RenderWorks mode that is already set up to show displacement mapping, such as Final Quality RenderWorks or the Realistic Exterior Final RenderWorks style. So first, let's take a look at the textures settings. We'll go to the Resource Manager. In the File Browser pane on the left, select the exercise file that is currently open. Click in the resource type drop-down box at the top and select RenderWorks Textures. And in the resource view pane directly below, we right-click on the texture called Stones and select Edit. And now the Edit Texture dialog box is open and it shows four shader families. And these are four distinct component types that can be used to make up a texture. And we'll notice that under Bump, which is the component that helps provide a 3D aspect to a texture, the selected setting is Image. That's because a photo image was used to generate the Bump shader. Now let's click on the Bump's Edit button and the Edit Image Bump dialog box opens. And now let's take a look at the Displacement Mapping area in the lower half of the dialog box over here. You can see that the height has been set to 80 millimeters and the detail has been set to high. Most textures don't use this feature by default and their displacement mapping settings are normally set to a height of zero. If we set the height to zero, you'll see that the displacement mapping settings are grayed out. And in this situation, the shader will rely on the bump strength setting above it to provide some three-dimensional appearance, but it's really not as effective generally as the displacement mapping feature in creating a photorealistic appearance. So if you want to take advantage of the more realistic appearance that displacement mapping makes possible, make sure that you enter a height above zero in the displacement mapping height setting. Now notice that the self-shadowing checkbox is selected as well, and this causes the components of the texture that appear three-dimensional because of displacement mapping to cast shadows and this helps make the scene more realistic as well. Now click OK to close the Edit Image Bump dialog box and click OK one more time to close the Edit Texture dialog box. Now we can render in Final Quality RenderWorks. So we go to View, Rendering, Final Quality RenderWorks. And we can also render with the Realistic Exterior Final Style and it does create a significantly better image but it can also take a lot longer to render. So if you'd like to try that, you can go to View, Render Work Style, Realistic Exterior Final. Now, a word of caution. Displacement mapping can result in long rendering times, especially if the detail setting is set to high and the self-shadowing checkbox is selected. So experiment a little bit in a smaller file 
and see if this feature makes longer rendering times worthwhile for your project. In many cases you'll find that the tremendous increase in realism that displacement mapping provides is easily worth the longer rendering times. Now let's make sure that RenderWorks can show displacement mapping. We'll discuss RenderWorks styles in more detail later, but for now we can take a quick look at the displacement mapping settings in a new RenderWorks style in case you'd like to experiment. Go to the Resource Manager, click in the Resource Type drop-down box at the top and select RenderWorks Styles. Now place the cursor in the Resource View pane below, right here. Right-click and then select New RenderWorks Style in and it's in the current document. The Edit RenderWorks Style dialog box opens and at the top of the dialog box there is a proposed name for the new style and you can leave it as it is or you can change it as you prefer. And uh, we'll click on the first tab which is Options just to make sure it's selected and then select the Displacement Mapping checkbox right here. And now click OK to close the dialog box. And that's all you need to do for this new render work style to show displacement mapping in the renderings. You can also edit any of the other realistic render work styles to include displacement mapping in a very similar way. But in any case, remember that you can always render with final quality render works or with the realistic exterior final render work style, both of which are already set up to show displacement mapping.